first of all, I would like to thank you for the great organization here and uh, in this beautiful city. Um, looking through rocks, geophysical research on the agora of the ancient city near Paphos, a case study. We are pleased to present you our first and a few, uh, first results and future aims of uh, geophysical research in near Paphos on Cyprus. The project uh, is part of the Agora uh, Paphos project upon the invitation of Ethdoxia Papucci Wauduka from the Jagiellonian Uni University in Krakow. In 2015, a team from Hamburg University, Martina Seifert, uh, Michalis Antonakis, and uh, me, undertook geomagnetic measurements for test purposes. Previous geophysical work was done by Arthur Buzek, David Swiauch, I hope that's right, uh, Thomas Herbig, in 2011 and Swabomir Chwabek in 2015. The idea was to start a joint mission to work out the opportunities uh, arising from the geophysical surveys methods under the existing conditions. Before going into geophysical de uh, details, I would like to describe the archae archaeological setting and give some information about the general research objectives of the Agora Paphos project at the site of Nea Paphos. You certainly are aware of the conditions uh, on the island, which has been a political hotspot throughout recent decades. Cyprus' position in the eastern part of the Mediterranean can be regarded as striking in consideration of its cultural significance. Since the late Neolithic, Neolithics, as a result of uh, occurrence of raw uh, material deposits, the island has played an important role as a crossroad uh, for the trade routes between Greece uh, on the one hand and the onshore of Asia Minor, Egypt, as well as the Levantine on the other hand. Archaeological evidence refers to an early cult of Aphrodite in Cyprus. Since the Bronze Age, Paphos, situated in the south of Cyprus, had been a place of cer ceremonial gatherings. From the 4th century uh, dates a Paphian settlement called Nea Paphos, or simply Paphos, located 16 kilometers southeast of Old or Palia Paphos. Under the dynasty of the Ptolemies, the town flourished quickly as it was conveniently situated along the important route to Alexandria, the nucleus of the Ptolemaic Empire, and th thanks to its port. During the reign of Augustus, Cyprus became an independent province with Nea Paphos being the capital. In the 15th BC, an earthquake caused severe damage and offered the opportunity for innovation regarding the urban development. Another severe earthquakes in the years 332 and 334 AD, um, Emperor Constantine relocated the administration to Salamis in the northwestern part of the island. Thus, Paphos lost much of its influence. The modern town of Paphos consists of this joint settlement patterns, and the remaining archaeological findings are concentrated on an area about two and a half kilometers northeast of the city center. The scientific exploration of the town dates back to the 1960s and is associated with the name Nicolaou. In 2010, the monument, here you can see uh, the tombs of the kings as an example. Um, in 2010, the monuments of the Nea Paphos were included in the UNESCO World Heritage List. Since 1964, there have been regularly undertaken excavations by the Polish expedition from Warsaw uh, at the invitation of the Cyprus Department of Antiquities. Since 2011, the Paphos Agora project was started under the direction of Ethdoxia Papucci Wauduka. The current excavations in Nea Paphos are focused uh, on the area around the so-called Agora. It lies th south of the Acropolis and originally had an extension of 9,025 square meters, of which only the fundaments of the colonnade are still bearing witness. The open space was surrounded by a porticus with columns covered by Corinthian capitals. Before beginning, beginning actual excavations on the site, a non-invasive terrain prospection was carried out in 2011 using the electrical resistance method. The prospection was done by Buzek and Spiauch 
under the scientific supervision of Thomas Scherbich from the Institute of Archaeology and Ethnology of the Polish Academy of Science in Warsaw. The preliminary results led to the assumption that we deal with an area devoid of large, penetra uh, large architectural structures, or with structures elusive for their geophysical methods. The penetration depth was, according to Buzek and Sviauch, one meter. Only the silobate around the agora and a singular structure located in the central part of the site was visible. Uh, the structures at the agora border and the anomaly in the center have been confirmed by the late excavation trenches. In 2015, the Polish colleagues under Sławomir Czwawek have undertaken ground radar investigations using a Mala Pro-X system with a 500 megahertz shielded antenna. All data were processed with Ground Vision 2 and exported in Mala RD3 format for post-processing in Reflex W. The team have mapped the area of the Agora as a whole single grid, both in north, south and west eastern direction, with a profile distance of one meter north south and a two meter profile distance in west eastern direction, all with a point density of two centimeters. Difficulties were caused by the fleshy and coarse grained stone backfilling, which the area was leveled with and which in many, case, in many cases displayed similar anomalies to the ones caused by the architectural under, uh, structures. The prospections provided very interesting results that are currently being developed. Unfortunately, the data is still in post-process by the colleagues, so that I can't show you any primary, primary results of these results. Because of financial limitations and transport difficulties coming from, uh, directly from Greece in 2015, we performed a restricted uh, prospection with only one probe of the Fluxgate Gradiometer Sensus Magneto MXDML without the automatic distance measurement. Effectively, we had three full days and so only easy, easily passable areas were suitable for us at that time. During this term, we worked at the south of the Agora on the first two days and on the Agora itself on day th three. Our grids were run in 25 centimeter profiles with a point density of 10 centimeters. Before I move to our results, it is important to mention that the city was built in a wide range on the bedrock consisting of sandstone, which is similar to the building material. In addition, it should be noted that the modern er area of the ancient city is covered by a one to two meter layer of anthropogenic sediments, mainly stone rubble and pottery. From the south side, the area is, uh, I will first speak from um, the south area, south of the Agora. From the south side, the area is uh, precipitous towards the north. The maximum inclination reaches to the middle of the space and thence to the southernmost edge. The difference in height amounts three meters. In the north, east, and west, a modern dry stone wall surrounded the field. In the west, mapping is pre prevented, uh, prevented due to an artificial raised slope with a height about 1.5 to 2 meters. A modern clay ground road coming from the east and bending to the south due to, a, to, due to the slope divided the area in two parts. The soil of the test area consists of comparatively loose brown to reddish sandy material covered by a layer of mowed dry grass, markies, and thistles. Small trees and bushes, which could not be removed, complicated the prospection. Throughout the site, several fragments of ashlars, of sandstone and limestone building piles of up to 1.5 meters in, place, in places were spread. Isolated concrete lumps in grids 1 to 4 indicate modern de development. As well, cans, bottles, electric cables, and so on polluted the entire area. After cleaning the surface, our whole measurement inclu included um, seven grids with an overall expanse of 4,250 square meters. Each had a size of 25 by 25 meters, with, with exception of grid one, which had an extension of 20 to 25 meters. The running direction was from north to south. The biggest disturbance appeared on the eastern half of the grid two and on the northern corner of grid four, where fragments of reinforced concrete had been removed before. Apart from that, 
Only few dipole anomalies occur with the magnetic field strengths of plus minus 500 nanotesla, probably caused by metal fragments. Archaeologically relevant structures obviously appear as straight or bent lines. In the northeast, grid 1 here is marked with an inverted colors to emphasize, emphasize the structures. Uh, three anomalies are clearly visible. The first of them runs exactly from north to south throughout the entire grid. Two lines cross the first one, but seem to run parallel to each other in west-eastern alignment. We probably can see traces of rooting here in this. Each of those structures has a magnetic field strength of approximately minus 7 to minus 15 nanotesla. The negative susceptibility indicates that diamagnetic slabs of limestone were used for the pavement of the pathway. The grids 5, 6, and 7 show a number of curved features and one straight but bent structure. This curved ones. Uh, the latter type runs northwest to the southeast, crossing <coughs> grid 7, 4, and 5, and finally turning east without showing a sharp decline. In width, 2 to 3 meters sh suggests another path, which does not comply with the routing in grid 1. The amplitudes show a positive magnetism of plus 2 to plus 9 nanotesla, indicating a different building material or a foundation of gravel. Located west to this anomaly are three arc-sharp parallel structures, each with a width of two meters. They appear to be at, of, a part of terracing in this area. Another arc or semicircle emerges in the northern half of the grid. This feature here. All the arcs have a similar magnetism of approximately plus two to just plus five nanotesla. Their meaning has to be clarified by further research. Those features and their different orientations become particularly interesting with regard to the possible transition from an orthogonal street routing in the northern parts of the town to a younger system in the south that could be located in this area. Finally, a selective monopole anomaly in the southeast of grid 6 uh, should be mentioned. This probably is a backfield pit. On the space of the so-called Agora, three grids with an expansion of 1,675 square meters were prospected. The plane is continuously flat and does not show any traces of recent buildings. The topsoil consists of comparatively loose brown to red sandy material. Most of the excavated building material is light, fine-grade sandstone. The positions of the excavation trenches 1 to 3 on the Agora were decisive for the placing of our test grids. The aim was to trace the course of the already known walls in the magnetogram, so we would have an indication concerning the size of the structures and to additionally verify the relevance of the magnetic prospection on basis of the expected properties. Looking at grid 1, The analysis shows a slight disturbed magnetic plane, revealing a number of primarily positive amplitudes with values between plus 3 to plus 25 nanotesla. An accumulation of rectangular features concentrating in the northeast appears prominent. They seem to form a multi-room complex with an extension of about 102 square meters. Their orientation corresponds with the other structures on the same plane. In spite of the, of the spike, the continuation of the walls we had been looking for in the northwest section can be confirmed by the course of both walls. Moreover, the bl blurry parallel lines in, on this grid appear. Uh, their allocations remain unclear. Probably canals uh, in the wet, canals or street uh, relations. Um, at Last, there have to be mentioned two bigger monopoles, plus 5 to plus 50 nanotesla, which probably are filled pits. 
The second bridge was placed about two meters next to section one. It's long here. <clears throat> its extension was of 40 meters from north to south and 15 to, uh, from west to east. Here as well, the aim was to find the expected extensions of the walls commencing from the na neighborhood grid, <laughs> neighborhood grid. A granite column appears in the magnetogram in, in the form of a chain of concentrated depots that cause the highest amplitudes between minus 100 to plus 327 nanotesla. You've seen in the north. An anomaly of 1.2 meters in the south of the grid probably is the connection of the wall detected in section one. Just this. Oh, what have I done? This small part here. Okay. Its extension was of uh, 40 meters from north to south and 50 meters from uh, west to east. Here as well, the aim was to find the expected extensions of the wall commencing from the neighbor grid. Agreed? Uh, well, I wasn't there, <laughs> sorry. An anomaly of uh, 1.2 meters in the south of the grid probably is the connection between the wall, uh, wall uh, and the detect detected section in section one. Furthermore, we can distinguish five linear structures which are interpreted as pipes or drainage. Three out of the five anomalies have a positive susceptibility of plus three to plus nine nanotesla and very likely are remains of tubes of clay as have been repeatedly documented in that area. In contrast, the lines in the south show a negative magnetism of minus uh, 0.5 to minus four nanotesla. With, with a width of approximately eight meters, they seem quite broad, so we uh, may conclude that this is a double canal made of limestone. More certainly, uh, uncertain structures north and south, as well as a circular anomaly at the center, have to be examined more thorough with lower point density or by GPR. Grid three, the last grid measuring 25 to north, uh, north to south and 21 west to east, was placed north of grid one on the Agora. The mag magnetogram shows a structure of three by three meters which seems to be a part of the layout visible in grid one. Here this corner. Moreover, there are several D and monopoles spread over the plane. The monopoles reaches diameters of more than two meters and a magnetic field strength of plus three to plus 17 uh, nanotesla, presumably caused by filled pits. When connecting those anomalies, a rectangular layout is striking which is in a thousand extent slightly goes over into grid one. This structure apparently does not match with the orthogonal orientation of the other findings. A coincidental uh, sequence of amplitudes seems unlikely, but the position of the orientation of this pattern indicate remains of a modern building. Despite uh, some difficulties, the beginning, uh, in the beginning we obtained some very positive results and set the basis for a further extension mapping. Prospection from this year on will be carried out with more probes, simultaneous GPS support, measuring of magnetic susceptibility, and a wide range GPR prospection. This will allow us to gain not only faster, but also more precise and higher resolution outcomes, which will put us in the position to make reliable interpretations of vast plans. In order to prevent ma uh, misinterpretation, it will be necessary to draw a map of interfering signals caused by modern buildings and underground cables. In addition to that, a precise analysis of the occurring stone material used for the construction of building and pavement of the foundation of the street could, be, could provide significant results even more. On basis of the presented results, we are going to participate in a three-year project in cooperation with our colleagues from Poland considering questions about the structure and economic relevance of Neapafos. Our aim will be extensive prospection of the accessible areas of the archaeological park. Those activities will be supported uh, through a survey flying and a topographic ground mapping carried out by colleagues from Warsaw and Krakow. Starting point will be the examination of the economic infrastructure of Neapafos with its agora and forum, the Marcellum, the colonnaded streets, ports, ship sheds, and war houses, as well as the trade and manufacturing centers. In the first year, we will focus <clears throat> on the northwest 
uh, the presumed position of the northern part of the port. Subsequently, we will turn southeast towards the southern port, and finally, residential building area in the west will be subject of our research. Thank you for your attention.